Hello! I am back with another 6th edition Tyranid webcast. Uh, this time, I'm broadcasting from a slightly different location. Uh, and this time, I made a special one just for gene stealers. Yes, gene stealers are good. I like gene stealers. They are very, very useful now. I don't believe that there is a single useless mo uh, uh, unit in this game, to be honest with you. Uh, there's some uh, London weather going. Um, so, but what's the trick? How do you use them? How are they useful? And after experimenting with uh, a lot of killing of the enemy, I found out that the, the key point to, to gene stealers is going to come down to the power, uh, the horror. And it took me a lot, well, not a lot, probably about two hours, to really think about why did they give the Broodlord the horror? What's what's really the use of it? How does it help the, the Gene Stealers survive? And the answer is... Pinning. So most of the time what people say is, hey, there's the gene stealers. They either walk in onto the board and they get shot down or they are infiltrated somewhere behind cover preferably and come out and get shot down before they get to a unit. That's where the horror comes in. At that point in time, you cast the horror, which is based upon the Broodlord making the role, not the opposite army. If they do, uh, that army then has to make a, a pinning check. Okay, that doesn't sound too, too effective, so what? It's a pinning check. Lots of people can pass a pinning check. Yes, but they have to make the pinning check at negative two leadership. And you think, eh, uh, okay, so that's a little bit worse. It's almost the same as Shadow in the Warp without range is really what it is. It's basically negative two instead of negative three, and it affects everybody. So that still means that that unit is pretty much going to be frozen there. Let's say it's a seer council, or, or some other unit, of, or, or even just a normal unit of troops with maybe a leadership eight if they have a, a sergeant. Boom, eight, seven, six. Now they have a leadership of six. That unit is pinned. They have to go to ground. Uh, that's useful both for assaulting and for lots of things. But basically, it keeps them from moving out of your range. A lot of the, the Eldar and battle focus and hit and runs and Tau trying to bounce out of your way, this keeps them in place. Now, it gets even better when you do something like attach a Hive Tyrant to it. Now the Hive Tyrant comes with the ability Hive Commander, which allows, well, they, he already gets it and I guess he doesn't really need to attach it to them. But it gives either him or, or a unit of his choice the outflank ability. So that they can pop in on the side of the table. So he doesn't even need to necessarily be attached to the Gene Stealer unit. But if he is attached, then it gets even better. Now, if it's a Psyker unit, once again, Grey Knights, I'm sorry, like I say, if you see Nids, just run. Run away. Because now the Horror is going to freeze them in place with a pinning attack. How is that going to happen? Uh, they get a negative three leadership. Any Psyker is going to get the negative three leadership from the Shadow in the Warp. Uh, the Horror is going to get another negative two leadership so phew, you're talking negative five leadership right then and there these units are not moving until you tell them to move and if you have a death leaper and that's why it's so cool that the broodlord is not an hq choice but an upgrade because now you can get three hqs out there you could get uh, a tyrant a Death Leaper and a Broodlord, all working as a little in you know, an axis of evil, if you want to say. Uh, and now you're talking about the Death Leaper could make 
the HQ another negative D3 off of leadership. You're talking about a minimum of a negative six off of leadership. That HQ unit is not moving if it's within 18 inches of a broodlord. You, you don't have to worry about gene stealers running across the table. Because just like I said with my Swarm, Swarm Lord video, they will come to you. They will want that brood lord dead. And that's when the gene stealers start to shine. They have to come to you. You don't have to go to them. It's the 18 inches. And maybe you'll just, uh, you know, stop another people along the way. So let's say you're coming up. Now you have our friend, the uh, Hive Tyrant, or possibly another unit that you can give the upgrade to it is or maybe it's only the hive tyrant the one with uh with indescribable horror which is the tyrant i think the swarm lord has it too uh which makes you roll 3d6 on your fear roll 3d6 take the highest two on fear uh many of those independent characters many of those force weapon wielding units out there take note of all of this 3d6 highest two you're going to get negative three for shadow in the warp you're going to get a negative negative one at least one to three if it's a main character your warlord uh which a lot of the choice units tend to be so you're talking about a minimum of negative four off the leadership to try to charge that unit with indescribable horror and preferably the, it's attached to the gene stealer unit wow <clears throat> needless to say that not many people tried doing that uh after that it's a lot of just waiting for people to come to you uh and if they're not moving you're also talking about fun things like the mall walk subterranean attack not, uh, not the subterranean terror chaos from below or terror from below i think it was and then also that turvagon's uh subterranean tunnels you're keeping people in place uh maybe you're bringing down a spore mine cluster around people um it's about controlling the other army that's what they do and when you want to kill that brew lord then you're going to have to think about all of those look out sir rolls okay and the look out sir rolls with those other little uh, uh gene stealers sitting around them that tends to keep these people alive for a very long time and on top of that i believe that the brood um the brood lord gets a biomorph yep so you're talking about regenerate so even if you do manage to get to him and a few few lookout sir room rules don't make it he's still popping up a wound every turn on a four plus same with the hive tyrants these are very tough units they don't need to walk very far because you will be forced to go to them that's been my experience with the gene stealers uh like I said, everybody is going to say, well, I can fire ordnance blasts at them and this, that, and the other. Yes, that's true. But the thing is, is that in a Tyranid army, there are so many units of priority. Are you using that ordnance blast on those Carnifexes over there? Are you using it on those gene stealers? Are you, and once again, this also says if you separate the hive tyrant from the gene stealer uh, swarm, uh, brood, then that's two different units. They don't have to be attached together. So which one will you be firing at then? It's an 18-inch range is the point. Um, making it real, real difficult. In the end, with, with the Tyranids, you're going to have so many choices of trying to figure out who is going to be the most deadly thing to you that turn. And... Typically, that list is longer than the number of ordnance blasts the enemy has in their army. Um, that is my review of Gene Stealers now and some of the combinations that I've used with them. I hope you like it, and if so, keep watching more of my videos in the future. Thank you.